In our first midweek Lenten services, the first six, we focused on what is seen through the eyes of various characters in the Passion. The perspectives of Judas, Peter, the chief priests and scribes, Pontius Pilate, the Roman soldiers, and the Jewish crowd. Last night, we meditated on how there is much more than meets the eye of what's going on at the Last Supper. Tomorrow night, we'll rest our eyes upon the sealed tomb of Jesus with sorrowful women. And on Sunday, we'll look to the empty tomb through the eyes of the Easter angel. But tonight, we'll view Jesus' crucifixion through God's eyes, what God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit saw, and what they accomplished at the cross for us men and for our salvation. What did God the Father see on the night and on the day that Jesus had died on Good Friday? He saw his only begotten son suffering and dying unjustly on a Roman cross. Can you imagine watching your own child die in this way? It's unthinkable. As sinful mortals, we can't understand what it's like to be immortal or a holy God. But surely the Father's heart was grieved beyond words. Yet what's even more unthinkable is that God loves you so much that he was willingly willing to inflict all of this on his beloved son. The Apostle Paul wrote, What the Father, he wrote that the Father did not spare his own Son, but gave him up for us all, Romans 8.32. And that God shows his love for us that we were still sinners, Christ died for us, Romans 5.8. He didn't wait for us to clean up our act before he went and did this. But while we were ungodly and enemies of God, He slaughtered his son in our place under his righteous anger against the sin of the whole world. This means that we provoke the death of Jesus. On Pentecost, Peter preached. He said this in Acts 2.23. He said, this Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by your hands and the hands of lawless men. The Father gave the Son to the whole world, but you crucified and killed him. Yes, Peter is also talking to you and me. He isn't offering some anti judaic rant, but an indictment of all sinners. Whether a sinner lived in the first century or the 21st century, the guilt and the blame is all the same. We all crucified the Son of God by our sin. Just as we sang in the Lenten hymns, I caused your grief and sighing by evils multiplying as countless as the sands. I caused the woes unnumbered with which your soul is cumbered, your sorrows raised by wicked hands. O child of woe, who struck the blow that killed our gracious master? It is I, the conscious cries, I have wrought disaster. As we acknowledge our sin and unworthiness, we need to see ourselves nailing Jesus on the tree. But at the same time, his crucifixion was according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, especially from God the Father. What value did the Father see in this plan. The Father saw, and now all of us can see, God's own glory being manifested to the world. This is what Jesus prayed for just hours before his crucifixion. Jesus lifted his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all flesh 
to give eternal life to all who have given you have given to him. And this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you have given me to do. John 17, one through four. The Father and the Son both glory in having mercy on sinners. That is what they accomplished during Christ's perfect life, his suffering, his death, and resurrection. The Father sees all your sins taken upon Jesus on the cross, even the sin of crucifying his very own Son. And moreover, he sees his wrath against sin being poured upon the Son and the gates of hell prevailing over him. Yes, hell is being under God's wrath, and that is what the Father sees Jesus taking in your place to save you. Now, for the Son's perspective, Jesus always knew that his name means the Lord saves. So he sees himself as the object of the Father's wrath, but as the subject of your salvation. He drinks his Father's wrath down to the dregs, finally crying out in abandonment from his Father, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But this is no cry of despair. He suffers abandonment from his Father. He suffers the pain of a sinner condemned to hell, but he still looks to his Father with perfect love and trust. My God, he cries, with unbroken faith. With the words, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit, he breathes his last. He knows his Father still loves him and will raise him from the dead on the third day. On this day, what does Jesus see when he looks at you and all sinners? He recognizes you as the cause of his woe, but he doesn't hold that against you. The Lamb of God bears this willingly. He wants nothing other than to be your Savior. He looks at you and then prays, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He stares into your sinful eyes and says, I love you all the same. I and my Father love you so much that we would make this sacrifice for you. I'm offering myself under the Father's wrath in your place to save you for your sins and spare you from hell. Finally, what does the Holy Spirit see? First, he sees the Son and comes to Jesus' aid as he offers his life as a ransom to the Father. You know, we don't know the ins and outs, but the writer of Hebrews said it this way, that Christ, through the eternal Spirit, offered himself without blemish to God, Hebrews 9, 14. Thus accomplishing your redemption, offered himself without blemish to God. Jesus had received the Spirit without measure in his baptism, and we know that the Spirit is the helper, so it, it makes sense that the Holy Spirit not only helped Jesus fulfill all righteousness in his earthly ministry, but it also makes sense that he helped him to offer himself on the cross to the Father's will to save us from our sin. Second, on Good Friday, the Spirit sees that everything necessary for the salvation of the sinner is achieved by the Son. Again, Jesus had promised just hours before his death, when the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. And all that the Father has is mine. Therefore I said, he will take what is mine and declare it to you. John 16, 13 through 15. Here we see the Holy Trinity working together in their natural and perfect harmony. 
The Father gave the Son the task of redeeming mankind. The Son willingly took the task upon himself, and the Holy Spirit joyfully proclaims the message that you so are, may enjoy the benefits of the Son's sacrificial death. The Spirit takes what is Christ and declares it to you. He takes the righteousness of Jesus and instills it in the waters of holy baptism to make it a life-giving water, rich in grace and washing of a new birth into God's eternal kingdom. He takes the forgiveness of sins and declares it to you through the gospel and through the words of absolution. And he presents you with the body given and the blood shed for you on the cross to be received for the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation when you receive the Lord's Supper. On Good Friday, God sees everything necessary to save you from sin, death, and hell. Although your own eyes look upon your guilt, your unworthiness, your impurity, the Father looks upon your sin forgiven for Christ's sake. And the Son credits his own righteousness to your account. And the Holy Spirit makes you a participant in the holiness of Jesus. You are baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So keep this truth in your mind, in your heart, and before your eyes at all times. Because when God looks at you, he sees the apple of his eye. His beloved child united with Christ in his death and raised up to new eternal life with him. Thanks be to God. In Jesus' name, amen.